And this is a very depressing subject, <laughs> as you all know. It's a fearful one, too. In India, we don't see that much about screening, that much uh, awareness about cancer. And whenever we see a patient, whenever I see a patient in my clinic, I see them in very advanced stages. And when I read about the statistics, it is really alarming in this country. So I thought I would put it as like this, it's not too late to restart something. We have not done what we are supposed to do. Even in the most educated of the public, they don't come across or doing what is necessary so that we can catch hold of the cancer in the early stages for a highest success rate. The goal is cancer awareness and prevention in today. A simple question which I already asked about, what is cancer and what do we know about it? We all like, there are times when we get injured and we, the uh, injury heals spontaneously. But what is the difference between this because from cancer, in injury the cells are dividing and we heal. Like let us say we have an abrasion that heals within a two or three days or four days time, but everything comes back to its normalcy. But cancer is not like that. A cancer is something in which a cell goes somewhere past its capacity and it forgets where it has to hold up, where it has to stop. The cell is deranged. The genetic mechanism is deranged in the <coughs> cell. So it forgets, I, want, I have to stop at this particular point. No, it doesn't have that mechanism. <coughs> so it keeps on going, growing, growing and all. Not only that, it not, it's not confined to the spot where it comes from, but it tends to spread to the rest of the body and eventually it takes the life of an individual. That is an abnormal growth, that is called. So we all have a feeling, like we all have a fear or a feeling, who is at risk or am I at risk of cancer? So there are a lot of algorithms to say whether what is our risk of developing a cancer or uh, how many, how if I develop a cancer, is it possible, is it going to happen now, is it going to happen in the near future, or is it not going to happen at all? That is our question. We all have the in here. Nobody is spared from cancer. Everybody is at risk. But how much is our risk is our question. It all depends upon what is our risk factor, what are we doing, what is the inherent risk factor, what is the required risk factor. There are a lot of required risk factors which if we adapt or if we change, we can change the course or we can change our fate. That's every human being at the risk of developing cancer. Now, we know that India is the second largest populated country in the world. As of last that I know, our population is 1.2 million. And our history or our statistics say that about 1.1 million people suffer from cancer within this country. But I think that is an erroneous number because we don't have what is called as a national cancer registry. From whatever the people or whatever the registries that are existing within the country, that is the number we have as of today. But that is likely to rise to almost double in the next two decades. It's about 1.8 to 2 million. Now, if you pay close attention to it, in the women, breast, cervix, colorectum, ovary, and lung, colon, and uh, the cancer. The same thing in the men, it's the lung and all. Why this is my most favorite slide? It's because four out of five cancers we can either prevent it or eradicate it if it is diagnosed early in stages because all of them are related to lifestyle changes. Are we able to do it? It all depends upon how much we are determined to do. Last month, October, was the month of cancer, breast cancer awareness. We have conducted a lot of meetings and a lot of awareness programs about breast awareness. One, this is a, uh, not our statistic, but it's from the American Cancer Society. What it says is, one in eight more women are likely to develop breast cancer and early detection saves life. That is my crux of this topic is early detection or even prevention. Because prevention really is better than cure. Again, coming back to cervix cancer, it's caused by an infection. I don't know why we cannot prevent it. If we can prevent cervix cancer, we can, if we can prevent the HPV infection, we can prevent cervix cancer. More than 90% of the cases are caused by this virus, it's called HPV virus. 
and if you can, and there is an excellent vaccination now available, and I would recommend that everybody have uh, undergo that uh, HPV vaccination. It's usually given uh, before the uh, onset of sexual activity. The American uh, again, American Pediatric Society and American Catholic Society. It recommends that you should start by the age of 13, and uh, it's also recommended for some people like up, up to the age of 45 years. The main reason for uh, uh, saying that it can be given even at age 45 because once a person is sexually active, they will be infected with HPV virus. And that HPV virus, those strains with which this number 16 and 18 are the most prevalent, but those strains, if somebody gets infected with that virus, that particular strain, the vaccination will not eradicate. Lung mm -hmm. cancer. Uh, today is the starting of the lung cancer awareness month. November is the awareness, lung cancer awareness month. And uh, uh, fortunately today I haven't seen anybody around here smoking, so I'm very excited about it. And smoking is the most important and the most dangerous uh, part, but yes. And uh, we all, everybody knows that there is a big warning on the cigarette packet that smoking is injurious to life, but I don't think anybody can realize that until they are affected by it one of the deadliest, uh, dead, deadliest cancer. Unfortunately, people keep smoking. And to add to that, like add, adding an injury to the insult, now we have electronic cigarettes. You know, nobody knows what is going to happen if you smoke. If they think that smoking electronic cigarettes, maybe they will be safe and not affected by cancer. But it's not true. Nicotine is nicotine. You can change that. This is again one of the slides from the American Cancer Society. What happens is, it plays more life than breast, colorectum, and prostate cancers put together. This statistics is from US, so please pardon me for this. <coughs> breast, prostate, uh, I'm sorry, breast, prostate, and colon put together will cause 120,000 deaths in the US. Lung cancer alone will cause 160 deaths. In India, the statistics are not that clear. We don't know the exact number because not many people report, not cancer, not many cancer registries, and there's no national cancer registry. So this number is likely to be much higher considering our total population. Stop smoking, that's my advice. No smoke. We can prevent a lot of deaths. Colorectal, well, we all are becoming familiar with this thing nowadays. When I was growing up in this country, I never saw a McDonald's. I never saw a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now we want a double burger, double meat burger, <laughs> French fries, soda, and all this. This is what I mean when I say lifestyle changes. Colon cancer is the most deadliest cancer. Again, after all this cancer that I described before, this is preventable. It's only diet changes and lifestyle changes we need. If we can do this, we can prevent colon cancer. Just about one week ago, International Agency for Cancer Research came up with an emergency newsletter. What it says is, it classified red meat or processed meat as the number one cause of cancer in humans. And it says, if you eat 50 grams of processed meat every day, it, the likelihood of cancer right, uh, cancer of the colon and rectum rising by 18%. So, can we prevent that? Maybe yes. So, can we prevent that? Yes. Maybe we can reduce processed meat eating, eat uh, healthy diet. Most important question now, what can we do? How can we protect ourselves? That's the preventive aspect I'm talking about. <coughs> Early diagnosis, I just mentioned about breast, cervical, and other things, even lung. What there, uh, what there is, there is a lung screening program, but that's not very effective right now. But in the near future, it's likely to be, uh, it's likely to become a standard scale in uh, uh, pre prevention and lung cancer detection. And a prompt treatment and a priority treatment. What can we do for an early detection? Have a baseline screening, like I said, mammograms, pap smears for ladies. A DSA examinations for uh, gents and uh, colonoscopy. That's the most important. If, uh, in Western world, when you go to the doctor, the internist or medical specialist, he knows.
your task 50, immediately you go to the gastroenterologist, gets a colonoscopy baseline, and then every two years or so, they will have a repeat colonoscopy. Here, I don't see anybody like that. People have a long term, long term symptoms, and they'll, then they'll start coming to the doctor. By then, by then, everything is very delayed. Is this the evaluation for any symptoms? A lot of times I see in this country when I started practicing last year at uh, my hospital, I see that patient had symptoms for few months, few years. And then the patient saw the primary doctor, okay, this is fever, this is cough, this is normal uh, uh, change in bowel habits. And the patient has not undergone a specialist in a uh, workup or a physician checkup. And the patient, by the time the patient came, the patient is in stage 3 or stage 4. But what I suggest is, if you have a symptom which is more than a normal, like <coughs> let's say you have a fever more than one, two or three weeks, it's not normal. A normal fever is usually with antibiotics should subside within a week or 10 days or maximum three weeks. If you start having persistent symptoms like that, don't ignore them. It's just like saying that it's something Okay, I'm tired, I'm fatigued, I'm do, I've done this. It's not that. You have to get your physician checkup without further delay. I have seen a lot of patients who, who had some lump in the breast, they didn't ignore it, or the doctor said, okay, it's fibroid in Oma. In 50, when you are 50s or 55s or 60s or late 40s, a woman will not get fibroid in Oma. It's very unusual for a woman to get fibroid in Oma. At 40s and 50s, the first suspicion should be of a breast cancer. So I have seen patients where in 55 years the patient was told that it's a fibroadenoma and left alone and less than one month, less than one year the patient had a metastatic cancer to the entire spine and entire body. So you have to be careful. If you have symptoms for more, you think it is not normal, don't ignore them. Just please visit a physician and get proper guidance. A prompt and appropriate treatment. Early diagnosis, I said, baseline screening, physician evaluation, prompt and appropriate work, prompt and treatment, and subsequent follow up, and we can prevent this. Stop going to my mouth. Or at least reduce the frequency of going to the car. I know it is an easy and a fast food that we don't have to go for the moment or that we don't have to cook and spend a lot of time in the kitchen, but that's not the answer for it. So we have all this so-called cancer awareness month. One, one is for, for breast, one is for lung and all. But what I personally feel is not just that one month, every every second of the day, every minute, every hour, every day and every month and every year is a cancer awareness month. So you keep thinking about it. If you can spread this message around, I'll be very happy. I think it uh, might help. Thank you very much.